Angel 66 is a film from 1998 by antagonizing bully and ostentatious film auteur Vincent Gallo and co-stars Christina Ricci in a somewhat breakout role and at a time when she was eager to impress but more likely outrage. The story is simple, Vincent Gallo is just getting out of jail and there happens to be a film crew there filming it. Okay, I'm sorry, Vincent Gallo's character just got out of jail and is wandering around and he decides to kidnap Christina Ricci in order to be in his film. And he kidnaps Christina Ricci's character in order to deceive his parents whom he has a very strained relationship with that that's actually his girlfriend and he settled down and kind of grown up and started making a life for himself and so we follow these two characters to the parents' house and we meet the fuckers. And it's basically a romantic comedy because the first five minutes are Vincent Gallo trying to find a bed. So there's always the question of separating the art from the artist and what context it holds upon, you know, a given work. With this one, it's a semi-autographical movie. And, you know, the parents' house is his actual childhood home, for example, and some of the storylines are sort of based off of things in his life. Which is too bad, because I really offend the opinion that he's a giant prick. Sexual misconduct allegations are yet to arise, but, you know, I've really heard this guy's a real dick to work with. He basically attacks his critics, especially if they don't know his prior work in, uh, you know, art and breakdancing. He's just constantly taking credit for everything and disparages people he's worked with after the fact, whether it's the cinematographer who he takes all the ideas for his own credit or calls Christina Ricci fad or, you know, tells Roger Ebert to go get cancer and die. And I guess, since I did actually like this movie, one of my only problems with it is that he still kind of finds ways to sort of put in this ego-driven stuff, like there's literally a scene in the bathroom where the guy's standing next to him and keeps looking at his penis as he's peeing and, you know, he goes, it's just so big. Or this whole long sequence in the bowling alley, which almost seemed like an excuse to be like, aren't I great at bowling? But if I could start handing out credit, I would say that the film has a really legitimate 70s New York gritty look and feel to it, you know, there's a lot of interesting creative uh, camera angles and shot composition and all this sort of stuff. And it has a feeling of maybe like a five easy pieces movie, especially because there's an actual scene in there similar to the diner scene where he wants toast, where Gallo's saying, I just want a glass of water. It was very important for this film to be well acted by the two leads, which it actually ends up being Vincent Gallo and Christina Ricci both give these very committed performances for these kind of uh, risky roles that they're taking on. And also the brutal editing. And there's little references to thing like the license plate says Ozu, which is a famous director. And I almost feel like Kevin Corrigan's character does like a reverse uh, Ratso Rizzo where he wants to be called Rocky instead of his real name. You know, you could really never go wrong with Kevin Corrigan. Whenever he shows up and looking all sleazy and you know something bad's gonna happen, it's just like, that's a real touch of class right there. Mostly his scenes in this movie though are just kind of him on the phone rubbing his bare belly. There's a lot of really random actors in this movie who have very varying levels of roles, like Mickey Rourke is in it, but only for a little bit. Rosanna Arquette shows up at the end. She was in a lot of sort of envelope pushing movies of this era like Crash and Pulp Fiction. And that fella who keeps always showing up in movies randomly, Kevin Pollock and Jan Michael Vincent. And Angelica Houston is also playing the mother. And Ben Gazzara plays the creepy dad. This movie has a really dope cast. And it's all kind of held together by Christina Ricci's performance. Or should I say Christina Ricci's bra? <laughs> the film's also aided with the fact that a lot of these characters feel like real people. Certainly the parents, like, I can totally, totally see the character of the father in real life as this guy who's still thinking about, like, yeah, I sang so many years ago in that club that Sinatra sang in, but those days are gone, but we look back on it nice, and now all they do is just obsess over football. This movie has a tough line to walk. It has to start with a main character who is very detestable and just, you know, runs around being a rude jerk and yelling faggot and whatever else, and then by the end, you know, we see his vulnerable side, and there's a scene where he cries by himself in the bathroom. The movie has to walk a thin line between having this character who starts out as a very detestable person who just yells faggot and is rude to everyone, 
But then we see his vulnerable side. We see what's beneath the man who keeps yelling at everyone. We see who the real Vincent Gallo is, a very tender and vulnerable person. Luckily it works, and the ending is actually very sweet unexpectedly. I guess if I had another criticism besides any like continuity errors, it feels like the sum is not as great as the parts. There's definitely like really a lot of great sequences in the movie ultimately. I mean, don't get me wrong, I actually really like this movie. But uh, there were maybe a few things here and there that were kind of clumsily placed plot points or uh, maybe just scenes that don't really need to be in the movie, like the scene in the bowling alley where she does a tap dance to Moonchild. It's just this kind of little sequence that just sort of comes and goes and it's nice. I don't think it's terribly necessary. Speaking of Moonchild, that's a song by King Crimson. This soundtrack is somewhat sparse in terms of featuring popular music, but what is featured is actually that song Moonchild by King Crimson, one of the best songs ever. Heart of the Sunrise by Yes, another incredible seminal prog rock band song album. So yeah, basically if you're alright with your love movie having quite a lot of long talky scenes and not a whole lot of action, which I think is great, then this movie's for you. would also recommend this movie in between, you know, other lo-fi 90s independent chic movies like Gummo or Slacker. And yeah, if I haven't made my point clear, I would definitely give this one a big old recommendation. Well done, Vincent Gallo. Next time around, we'll see. Definitely watch this on Amazon Prime, though, so Vincent Gallo doesn't get any money. Okay, thank you so much for watching. And uh, we'll see you next time. And won't you do me a favor and stay sexy?